Charging my Remarkable, and I'm running out of room on stickers. I uh, just applied a, a Beats Audio one. Trying to get the bubble off there. There we go. Got this one yesterday from a friend that lives in Oregon. Share your sticker pics. REI Love. All right, I'll do that. Hashtag REI Love. Uh, I grew up with REI because well, REI is awesome, and they're in Washington, and Oregon, and Utah, and I think this is going to look great. Kind of right here, centered. Hopefully I can get that level. Oh, yeah. Thank you, uh, JP, for the cool sticker. I think that looks awesome. I'll be looking at that every day. Uh, no, none of these are sponsors. I just want to be clear, just showing my passion for some of the products that I like and restaurants. Mmm, churro company. Someone had a question. So if you go to settings, and right there I have 1.78 gigabytes used of 6.41. So still plenty of space. Let's see, November to today. Uh, so it's August now. Uh, that's a lot of math. Nine months, going on nine months now, and it's great. I did have a small issue with Wi-Fi yesterday where I couldn't get it to connect to my phone, which normally it does that. But other than that, everything is great. I did find this weird thing, and let me show you. And this is kind of a user error that I was making. When you're copying something, you initiate you know, the copy method and then you go like that. You have to choose copy. <laughs> I was forgetting that. And then it stored the last thing I copied. So now I can close that, go to a notebook or, or create a new notebook, right? And then if I tap, now my current thing, if you don't hit copy, it stores whatever was in the last uh, item on the clipboard. Anyway, kind of cool. And then you can continue to paste that same thing. I can go to new page, paste it again. This is my favorite thing. Of course you can move it, but even better, you can rotate it any which way you need. And then you can continue to rotate it. Then I'm gonna make it a little smaller and then put it right there in the corner. Now, it even lets you kind of put it off the page, which is quite funny. So let's shrink it so it still hasn't deleted it. So very much a paint shop Pro, Adobe Pro functionality, it's awesome. And then when you're done, there, pretty cool. And that's my review. Let me check the actual day here, hang on. Okay, so I got this on November 18th, 2020. How long ago was November 18th, 2020? Okay, day 262. Boom, how's that? Awesome. I was showing this to some coworkers. I, I wasn't trying to show off, I promise, but this is one of my utilities that I bring to work, I bring to meetings, bring to church, I, I bring it everywhere. Take it on vacation, business trips, uh, sometimes even take it out to lunch. It's awesome. I love the fact that when I check and change another to a different stylus, even though I'm still using the same stylus, it's different. And it is a remarkable experience with those 4,000 and change pressure points. Let me see if Google knows that. How many pressure points are on the Remarkable 2? inch display with 226 dots per inch at 1872 by 1404 resolution. 
This is a second general canvas partially powered e-ink display with Carta technology that looks better than the original. Using the remarkable marker, the screen can display 4096 levels of pressure. There you go. 4096. Whoops. So, favorite part? Eraser. Erase all. And then for this, I think I need marker. And we're going to do thick and gray. And that feels different. Fun stuff. And that is my story and I'm sticking to it. My name is Peter and I like the Remarkable Tablet. And no, they didn't pay me to say that. I, I knew I was in trouble because I had this old habit, which for the most part I've gotten rid of. I, I would buy gadgets and return them. Now I buy them, keep them. Uh, I'm suffering from tech debt now. <laughs> uh, and then uh, I'm going to be selling some off here in the next month or so. So check on Facebook and you can get some great deals on some gadgets. I'm going to sell some of the old stuff that I've not grown tired of reviewing, but kind of. Uh, case in point, one of them is going to be probably one of my favorite gadgets. I just don't need it anymore and I want to get a different one. The Instinct Solar by Garmin. So I'll be posting that online. I'll probably sell this for $250 if you're interested. Let me know. Maybe $225. But Remarkable, it's been great. I did recently talk to a technician and he scolded me and said, actually, let me bring up the email because I was quite, what's the word, taken back <laughs> on, on how he responded to my issues with the Remarkable. So many emails, so little time. Ah, here we go. Uh, thank you for reaching out to us. I am sorry to hear that you are having trouble with your battery. Indicator. The issues you mentioned could be due to a battery indicator on your Remarkable not being calibrated correctly. Typically, as you use the device more, it will learn how you like to work and then provide more accurate battery percentage estimate based upon your daily routine. Okay, that's good to know. To help speed up this process, we advise using your paper tablet until the battery is drained completely. Then charge it fully by plugging it in for about four hours or so, which is what I've read, that you really do plug it in for that long, and it's taken that long when I, when I plug it in. So then they go on to say, uh, another reason, uh, hold on a second. To help speed up this process, we advise, uh, yeah, using your paper tablet and the battery indicator will get, okay, so they recommend charging it for four hours, which I'm going to do now. I have it plugged in with the OEM cable, and as always, I like the Apple 5 watt. It's very gentle. It's about the same, <laughs> gentle, it's about the same power, voltage, and amps as most USB ports on computers, but because the Remarkable comes with USB-A, I can't plug this into my Mac, it's USB-C. Thanks for that, Apple. So I use this old school plug, so I'm gonna leave that plugged in. And then they go on to say, uh, da, 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 et cetera, repeat this process a few times and the battery indicator will get smarter, giving you a more realistic estimate. <sighs> Please get back to us and let us know if it worked. Best regards, Benjamin. And then I sent them my stats, like, okay, I plugged it in via 5-watt Apple Brick charger, 20%, it was at 2%, 955, 1058 at 24%, at 1149, 39%, and then at, at 1339, it stayed at 76. An hour later, 79%, and then at 3, 1523, 79%, and then finally at 1525, after being at 76 to 79 percent for over three hours that's when i thought something was wrong so i unplugged it and then and then turned it off and then plugged it back in left it off an hour later at 1611 i turned it back on and it read 92 percent 
which means that a power off or shutdown allows the remarkable tablet to fully charge. What's, what's up with that? And then at 1615, I just unplugged it at 93. So I asked them, why does it stop charging at 79% and 80%? And what's the power off doing? So then I get another email back and they said, the device uses machine learning to study your daily usage patterns and charging routine. So it limits charging at 80% until you need to use it. Believe it or not, always having your device at 100% actually wears out the battery quicker, quicker. And that's what Garmin's telling me. That's what OnePlus and, and Apple, and that's what everyone's saying, that you don't want to constantly top off your batteries. Okay, the optimal levels are between 30% and 80%, according to Remarkable. At these levels, get the most out of your battery, especially lithium ion, which is inside your Remarkable device. So while it may be annoying, it is supposed to help you out in the long run. It prolongs the device's battery and helps prevent you from wearing out the battery too quickly. Another reason why you find your device battery is not charging 100% because of the battery's temperature. When you overcharge it, it may generate a lot of heat, which is also detrimental to the battery's health. The heat that your device generates while charging basically exerts extra stress on the battery, reducing lifespan. We don't want that. We recommend charging your device via laptop for at least four hours straight. This should ensure battery life to fully charge. If the issue worsens, please let us know, etc., etc. Karen. And I'm not making fun of her. her. Her name is Karen. And I happen to know a lot of people named Karen. Karen, over at, uh, you know, the company. Yeah, you're awesome. And you've never been a Karen. So there you go, 30% to 80%, but once in a while they say drain the sucker completely, which I have done. Uh, it go, it'll, it'll go down to 3% and then 2%. I just, you know, just keep reading so I don't have any issues and then it'll just shut off. I leave it off and then I plug it in and I'll leave it plugged in for four or five hours. If you don't use the device and you put it into sleep mode like that, it does charge faster and it charges really fast. So if you're in a bind and you really need to charge your Remarkable quickly, what you wanna do is shut it down and then plug it in for like two hours, it will charge twice as fast as it does in sleeping mode. So there you go. Yep, still recording. <laughs> so there you go. Those are my thoughts on the Remarkable. Do I recommend it? Yes. Do I use mine? Yes, every day. <laughs> I literally have used it every day for the past, what did I say, 262? 200 and, yeah, 262. I'm a little tired, a little wired. And uh, yeah, let me know if you have any questions. Uh, the PDF thing is working great. I do still wish they would integrate with Dropbox or Google Docs or What's that Microsoft one? OneNote? That might be cool. Because there are times that I'm on my Windows machine or my Mac and I'm editing a note and I would like to just take what I have typed, transfer it to this, and then keep on doing. Y you can sort of do that if you convert it to a PDF and added a bunch of pages. But right now, one of the bugs, not bugs, one of the feature requests that I have is that when you are in PDFs, and let's say I open this Enduro PDF, right? So this is a document that I created myself. When I'm in here, I can't insert a new page. So you can't add a blank page to an existing PDF. Remarkable, did, did you get my, that, my email that I sent? I would really like that feature. And if I'm wanting it, there's lots of other people. That's all I have for today. Thank you so much for watching and let me know if there's something that I've missed in my reviews. There is a playlist that I'll throw up on the screen that you can watch, and I've organized all my remarkable videos about this paper tablet so you can go through, and as of right now, I, I don't have any pending questions. Um, I did show the font thing, and I'll have a little surprise snippet after the credits to answer a question from one of uh, my viewers. Uh, the two rings on my finger, that's another thing that I'm working on, a gadget. It's the Aura Ring. 
they sent me these this sizing kit and I've been wearing the rings for the last 72 hours actually four days yeah I thought I could pull off the thumb ring I, I don't know if I'm that type of guy so I'll have another review posting on Monday today's Saturday and I hope you enjoy thanks for watching and yes don't forget to run farther to go further in life and let the credits roll for the Paramount Kid. See you real soon. Goodbye. Well, thank you for staying to the end. I, I love posting the end credits because one, I, I like watching movie credits. I'm in the theater till the very end until the screen goes dark and the house lights come back on. Uh, my son, the Paramount Kid, we love end credits. So he and I always watch them. <laughs> I usually end up watching my video at least two or three times. And okay, remarkable. So I have three questions that I need to answer, and one of them is from Nicholas Chicotle. I, I apologize if I pronounce your name incorrectly. Some more input on who is it for. Uh, this question just came in from the top 24 remarkable two questions. He, this, he literally sent me this three minutes ago. Some more input on who is it for students. I'm a grad student in astronomy and astrophysics. Okay, Nicholas, this is the, the part that you're like. So this is the pad we're doing later. So I just had to quickly create it so I can write some notes. So now down here in the bottom left, I can go to notebook settings and I can put the title of the notebook. So I can just go there and then I can type astronomy and I'm gonna guess you're an advanced student so I'm gonna say astronomy 401 and then I'll put just lecture notes and if you want you could even just say like you could keep them in week format so I could say week uh, what week is it there's my Google phone Let me ask Siri. Hey Siri, what week of the year is it? It was Friday, January 1st, 2021, New Year's Day. Hey Siri, what week number of the year is it? It's Saturday, August 7th, 2021. Okay, that didn't work. So we're going to say this is...
week 45. So now we can click save and if a month from now or 10 hours later you're back at your house and you're wondering, oh man, where did those notes go? You know, and you're in PDF or whatever, you can just click back on the main menu, you can go to my files, you can click on search, and then when you type in search, if you just type in astronomy, it's gonna quickly search all those files and find both PDFs and everything applicable to the word astronomy. And then if you had multiples, you'd see week 45, week 44, week 21, uh, my final notes, uh, et cetera, et cetera. And then as far as the paper feel, let me go to a new page and I'll be really quiet. So we're getting a little bit of ghosting right there and the way you fix that is you just close that notebook. So right there it quickly synchronized to the cloud and then if I reopen the notebook now the ghosting's gone. It's kind of weird sometimes when I use the marker and I use a really thick font I'm more prone to getting ghosting but it's rare. I like to write in pencil when I'm taking my notes, medium tip. And here's that paper feel. There, there's just a lot of tooth to the remarkable and I just love that tooth feeling. And if I write in normal font, There you go. And something like this is very helpful, not only because I fill 2,000 plus pages of work each year, but it also helps keep it all organized. Also, I have a bad ADHD. Uh, very sorry about that. I, I actually thought I had ADHD in college. I got tested. It turns out I'm just kind of a busy bee and I like to fidget and sometimes I have a hard time sitting still, but I don't have ADHD. I always doodle in meetings. I have to do something. Anyway, and this having no other distraction and purely being for writing is attracted to me because I get distracted so easily. And the tactile feel of a pencil on paper is really the only way I can remember things from lecture easy. Pens on glass screens never work for me because they don't have that feeling. Spot on, Nicholas. I, I couldn't agree more with that paper-like feeling. Yeah, so I, I've, I've done that before. Let me show you that paper-like feeling really quickly. Next question is from Christine Rosacline. I'm not gonna pronounce some of these last names. So this is from Christine. Thanks for the great review. I got a question about the zoom. Does it zoom only from 100% to 150% as a next step? Or is it possible to zoom in smaller steps like 110 and so on? I mean this more for the PDF reading. I would like to zoom a little bit so I would still see the whole text. So Christine, you had questions about PDFs. So you go to menu, I go to PDFs, and then if I open one of my Garmin PDFs, so here's my PDF, I can just zoom this little bit and I'll go to highlighter. And I can zoom out, zoom a little more. So as far as 100%, 110, yeah, you can just pinch it just a little bit and zoom just a tiny bit if that's what you want. So here's normal, just 100% view. If I just pinch once, that's kind of like 110 and then I can still pinch and then move down. So you still can read. The other thing you can do is you can click on the menu option and go under settings, PDF settings. You can name it, you can change the last cover, and then also you can do adjust view. So see how I'm adjusting the view and if I zoom out here, I can drag that or bring it in. And now let's watch, adjust view and now it kind of rearranges that PDF. So I, I hope that answers your question 
on zooming. So you can zoom in not just 100 to 150, you can zoom in just a little bit. So here would be like 200 zooming in, and then you can drag and, and view whatever you need to, and then at any time you can just quickly zoom back out. It's even, it even works better when you're in the eBooks. So if I switch to eBooks, so here's a Merriam-Webster entry of the word amok, a violently raging, wild, or uncontrolled manner in murderously frenzied state, amok. So I can zoom in, zoom out, and then I can go to eBook settings I can rename it again, but even better, I can change the text settings. Sorry, I was uh, off camera there. So in the very bottom right, so there I've reset all my settings. Right here, you just go to text settings, and then here are all the options. So you have justification, margins, I can change the font size to really big, and I can change it to EB Garamond and then it gives me a preview done and now that's what my font looks like for my ebook and then if I go to the King James Bible I can do the same thing and in these you can highlight you can write so this is pencil I can quickly change it to highlighter and then I can highlight passages or text in the PDF or ebook and I can do the same text settings for the entire Bible as well. I can make it really small font. Misalignment may occur. We've seen you make several annotations, highlights, or doodles. If you decide to change your settings, they may, became, they may become misaligned. This could be irreversible. Ooh, yes, change settings. So now because I changed that, it's gonna go through the hundreds of pages that are in the Bible and change the font, and that's what Remarkable is doing in the background. I hope that answers your questions, Christine. If not, put the comments down below, and I can always do another video. But the font will be bigger and easier to read. Thanks a lot. Okay, let me answer that question for you, Christine, and I'll show you a PDF. And question number three, this came in a few weeks ago. Uh, this was from Michael. Is there any specific reason why in every review I see people write with such huge font. Is that how you take your notes daily? Don't think so. This really makes most of the review useless as we can't figure out what would be the outcome of taking handwritten notes, something that this device is designed for. So Michael, to answer your question, let me show you some small font and how I normally write. So this was off the 128 Remarkable Days and apparently uh, he felt and others felt my font was too large. So let me show you some journal entries I made. So here is a notebook that I've been making notes on. <laughs> and if you look, I would say this is pretty normal size font. And if we count the number of words, well, I'll let you count those. Let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. 18 times eight, carry the five. 144 to, oh, 200 words per page. And I would say this is normal size font. And this is how I normally write. This is a review that I'll be posting probably sometime in the next week or so all about the OnePlus Buds Z, the Stephen Harrington edition. Anyway, so there's your font example because you were wondering why everyone writes in such large font. I normally don't. I'm able to take copious, copious notes. For example, another one that I've been writing, uh, these are all my notes on my sleep study that I've been doing for the past, well, you can see right here, Note 188 from August 3rd. I wore my Garmin to bed, my Apple to bed, my Polar X to bed, the Fitbit Charge, and Samsung. Uh, I don't know if one of my kids was wearing that to bed. Twas a rough night of sleeping. Sometime during the night, I took off the Polar and the Fitbit both because they're on my ankles and they bothered my skin too much. So there you go. You can write in normal font. I'll do a new page right here and create 
the new one and show you normal size font. Whoop, not that zoomed in. Hold on. Normal size font. See now even that's too big because I'm in marker. So let me switch to ballpoint pen. I'll do a thin. Then we have normal font for Michael, what was your last name? I'll just abbreviate it, L. How does this look to you? There you go. Is that normal? I don't know. Normal is, you know, a unique perspective, and I'll write that for you. Oh my gosh, I cannot write. I get nervous sometimes when the camera's on. Oh my gosh, good grief. I hope that answers your questions. Thanks for watching, Michael. Thumbs up. Ooh, is that an aura ring I see? Why, yes it is. Well, it's the prototype sizing ring they sent you for free. That's all, let's wrap this up. All right, and I hope that wraps that up. Uh, this video did go longer than 10 minutes. So down below there are chapter shortcuts if you wanna jump around and that's all I have. See you again in 88 hours or maybe sooner. Goodbye and get outside and go swim, bike or run or go for a hike, you know, take your dog for a walk, go play Frisbee with the kids or Take your kids for a walk and go play frisbee with the dogs. See you later.